Hello, American Crochet Association. Selena Baca here, founder, host, lead educator with the ACA. And every Tuesday, I like to come on over here and bring up a topic, uh, share a tip, just kind of share some crochet knowledge. So if you're watching live, come on over, say hey, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from. And if you guys would like to have a deeper conversation about the topic today, just go on ahead and post any questions, comments, anything like that and we'll make it a really fun conversation, okay? So today's topic today uh, is an oldie but a goodie. I love this topic so much. It's something that I really enjoy. It's really close to my heart. It's all about crochet instruction, okay? So this is for, or this topic today, crochet instruction, is for those who maybe want to teach crochet. Maybe you're already teaching crochet. Uh, maybe you'd like to, but you have more questions than answers. So today I'm just bringing uh, a few tips your way. Uh, three, exactly. I've got three things, three tips, three things that every crochet instructor should do. Arguably, there's a million things that every crochet instructor should do, but I really love these three specific topics that I'm bringing up today because this kind of debunks, I think, a lot of things that we're doing uh, ineffectively in the crochet world whenever we teach. Uh, I'm definitely speaking from my own experience. Whenever I learned to crochet, there's a lot of things on here that just, um, you know, did not allow most people to persevere. I persevered, but a lot of people did not. Uh, also, I taught crochet for years and years and years. I taught dozens and dozens and dozens of individuals and I learned that I was doing a lot of things wrong. I was doing what I was taught or I was allowing my students to dictate what they were going to learn and how they were going to learn. And that's just not a very successful strategy for a lot of individuals. So after teaching dozens and dozens and dozens of individuals how to crochet, I built a program, our crochet instructor training program at the American Crochet Association. I've taught dozens of individuals how to be crochet instructors. And these three things uh, that we're going to talk about today come up time and time and time again. And I feel like these are things that we need to debunk so that we can be better crocheters. We can pass crochet on in more meaningful ways so that it can prosper through the generations. And it just makes our job as, as crochet instructors far easier. But also, when we follow these three things, others who are looking to learn crochet, they're going to feel more successful. So before I share three things every crochet instructor should do, let's see who's here live. Let me give some shout outs. Say hey and hello to everybody who's here. Rama Loxmi is here. Hello, so good to see you. Rosetta Williams is checking in from Louisville. Oh, Francis is here. Hello, Francis, so good to see you. Andrea's here. Greetings from Illinois. Kay Mathis is here from Indiana. Francis says, oh my gosh, I'm here. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're here. You're live. So good to see you. Our very own DePauly is here. She is a crochet treasure. It is always so good to see her here. Uh, she's got lots of friends. People are saying hello to her in the comments. She's very popular. Ah, uh, hello, DePauly. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's see, Angel is here. She's saying hello to everyone. Andrea Carey is here. She says, bought a yarn winder after last week's tip. I am so glad because that's exactly what I hope these tips do. Hopefully they help you think more. Hopefully they help you ask better questions in crochet and hopefully they just help to give you a better crochet life. So Andrea, if you got a yarn winder after our last, uh, after our tip last week, come on over to our Facebook community, share a picture of it. Let's see your yarn cakes. Let's have a conversation about it. We would just love to see and celebrate with you. And maybe you'll inspire someone else who doesn't have a yarn winder to get one. That would be exciting. DePauly says pattern testing as I listen to your wonderful tips. Linda Woodthorpe, another crochet national treasure that we have. So good to see you here. And our very own Sherry Richards, who has been with us for a long time. And we just we love having her in our communities. Thank you for being here. All right, so that is everyone who has said hello so far, but I see so many more of you guys are here. So as you're watching, come on over, say hey, say hello. Tell me where you're viewing from. And as I go through these tips, I'll pause in between and we'll further the conversation, okay? All right, guys, so three things every crochet instructor should do. 
Um, first and foremost, as you're listening, I would love to hear how you learn to crochet, okay? So just let us know in the comments. Was it one-on-one? -on -one? Was it in a group setting? Did someone teach you? Did you learn from a book or from a video? How did you learn to crochet? And also, did you feel that that was a good experience? Was it a frustrating experience? Did you feel like there were a lot of hurdles? I'd love to hear that too, okay? Because really, I think that's just going to help further this conversation as a whole. Let's get it out there, all right? Okay, now the reason I'm saying all of this is because um, I'm going to start with our first thing. This is thing number one every crochet instructor should do and should know. Now, I'm going to start by telling a little bit of a story. Whenever I learned to crochet, and this is typical for a lot of people, I learned in a group. I learned when I was five years old, and I learned in my class of other five-year-olds. There were probably 10 of us, 10 or 12, something like that. And we all learned to crochet in this group setting together. How successful do you think us five-year-olds were? Not very successful, especially since, uh, to my recollection, my very first crochet project uh, were these little goat horns that we all had to make because we were all in a play, the school play, the three billy goats gruff. And so, you know, we all crocheted our own little goat horns. I still have mine. I have them. I just moved my office. So I don't know where they are because I just moved. So they're either here or there or there or here or there. They're somewhere. Um, but I just pulled them out and I put them on the other day because, you know, I'm nerdy. But um, I realized as I was looking at it that I didn't crochet 90% of those goat horns, and I'm pretty sure the rest of my class was the same, okay? Now let's go back and let me first and foremost say that I am so thankful that my school introduced crochet, but I definitely persevered. I definitely was one that loved crochet enough to want to continue practicing it and want to continue doing it, but that was not the same for uh, probably most of my classmates. So thing number one, every crochet instructor should be doing, every crochet instructor, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, is giving lessons individually, okay? Now, what do I mean by individually? I mean have one student, no more than two students, okay? So when you learn to crochet, it really is this thing that takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one support, okay? You're sharing how to hold yarn, how to hold a hook, and then actually how to make fabric with individual stitches, and that is very time-consuming. It takes a lot of time and energy to do that, and really the best scenario to make sure that you're passing that information on in effective ways is to make sure that you only have one, maybe two students. And the reason I say don't ever have more than two students is that you're teaching someone how to crochet. You're going to have to use both of your hands, they're using both of their hands, and then you're what you're you're showing them one step at a time and they're learning one step at a time. That's really going to be the only effective way you can pass crochet on, okay? Now, um, I hear it all the time. I see it all the time. People who are very confident as crocheters say, I'm very confident as a crocheter. I'm going to teach three, four, five of my friends. I'm going to go to a classroom. They're sixth graders. They're, you know, uh, it's, it's in a, an elderly home. It's, you know, it's fine. You know, I'm going to go and teach whoever wants to learn. And what we see in these groups, it happens every single time. I'm going to say there are zero I'm just going to say it. I know that that's probably wrong, but there are zero circumstances where this ever works in a group setting. When you're teaching people how to crochet, the assumption is that they don't know how to crochet. Maybe they know how to chain stitch. Maybe they know how to half double crochet. Maybe they know one particular stitch. But in essence, if you're teaching people how to crochet, again, they're using both of their hands and their brain. You're going to have to use both of your hands and your brain. So if you have three, four, five, six, ten people, that's not an effective scenario. Every single one of those individuals is relying on you to tell them what to do with both of their hands. So they're gonna have to look at you and then try to replicate that. And most times they're not gonna get it off the bat. So you're gonna have to then go to people individually, which means that whoever you're working with individually, everyone else is left out. So some people are gonna get bored. They're gonna get frustrated. It's taking far longer than it needs to. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna feel like, I just don't get this. It's me. This is not for me. This is frustrating. I give up. That's what happens in group settings. That's what happens in most group settings. So I'm going to say it again. Thing number one that every crochet instructor should be doing, 
They should never, ever, ever have more than two students if they're teaching people how to crochet from the ground up. Now, a lot of you guys may go, wait a minute, I've been at a workshop before. I've been at a group setting before. Yes, group settings work, workshops work for people who already know how to crochet, who are looking to follow along to make a project or learn a technique. So the assumption is that they already know how to crochet, but maybe they're looking to advance their skills and learn some Tunisian. Maybe they're looking to advance their skills and work a thread work, uh, you know, dream catcher or something like that, or learn a new stitch or technique. They already know how to crochet. They can already work all the basic stitches. They already know how to read a pattern. They already know how to hold their work and count their work and count their stitches. They're just looking to you to teach them maybe something very specific. So I feel very, very, very strongly about that. It's something that I feel like I saw time and time and time and time and time again, and I still see it time and time and time and time again. And so it is one of my foundational, um, it's one of my foundational teaching um, criteria. Whenever I teach other people how to be crochet instructors, that is one of the first things that I teach. And I'm not gonna name names, I'm not gonna point any fingers, I'm not gonna pick on anyone, but I will say I did have a crochet instructor who was brilliant, she's a brilliant instructor. And I called her out one time and I was like, girlfriend, don't do it, because she, I, I don't know why she did it, but she said, hey guys, I'm gonna teach beginners crochet and, I'm gonna, and I can have up to five students. And I was like, girl, don't do it. You just went through my program and that you that's one of my I can't I can't have an ACA crochet certified pattern, you know, a certified crochet instructor teaching in group settings like that. I can't do it. So I love you. Please don't do it. Love yourself. Let's pass crochet on in meaningful ways. Don't do it. <laughs> so I feel so very strongly about it that whenever I see people say that they're going to teach in group settings, hey, just come show up with some yarn and I'll teach you. I'm like, oh no, don't do it, please. Let's not do it. So, okay, I have rambled enough. Let's see what you guys are saying because I asked a lot of questions and I would love to hear what you guys are saying about all those questions that I that I had before I started rambling. Oh, Dipali is so popular. Everyone is, is talking to her. Rosetta says she learned from looking it up uh, in the World Book Encyclopedia. Wow, girl. Uh, Peg says, I learned in junior high school when I was 14. The first thing I ever did was the Afghan stitch to make squares. Uh, Dipali says, would love to see your first project, Selena. I'll tell you what, I'm going to dig them up because I, oh, I found them. They're over there. I'll take pictures and I'll share them in the comments. All right. I, I found two of my very first projects. One, I definitely only did 5% of it. And the other one, you can definitely tell I did the whole thing. And it's just adorably awful. It's terrible. So I'll, I'll share pictures in the comments. Sherry said, I'm pretty sure my first project was attempting to make a granny square. I was about seven years old. Yeah, that was definitely one of my first projects too, was making granny squares after our first very specific projects. Uh, Donna, she says hello to everyone. She learned stitching at her grandmother's feet while she crocheted bedspreads. Aw. Angel says I learned uh, the basics many years ago from my grandmother, but put it down when she died about 10 years ago. So I'm trying to relearn. Good for you, Angel. I love that so much. Chris Lopez says my mom tried to teach me when she taught me to knit at nine years old, but it just didn't click. She says I taught myself 10 years later from a book. Wow, girl. Good for you. Linda Woodthorpe says, I don't remember how I started crocheting. Uh, it was a long time ago. I certainly had a booklet I referred to, think it was a uh, patents. But my mother and grandmother both crocheted, so I may have watched them. And now Linda is just, like I said, a crochet national treasure. Um, and, you know, she does all the things and knows all the things and crochets all the things. So she really has come such a such a long way. Dipali says, I learned knitting and crocheting from my grandmother when I was 14 in grade nine. Uh, picked up the hook again after 21 years. Uh, Donna's got a great question. How do you enroll to become a certified crochet instructor? You can enroll anytime just by coming on over to our site. The address is americancrochetassociation.org. O-R-G. I will uh, also reply to your comment with that link. 
um, or you can get more information or about uh, the topic today just by clicking the link in the video description, and that will also take you to our instructor training program. Uh, but great question, Don. I'd love to see you in our program. Chris Lopez says, I've sat in a few beginner crochet classes this summer just to give the instructor moral support. Hundreds of students via live Zoom, and what a disaster. Half the people couldn't even do a slip knot, and the instructor was trying to show chaining and stitches. Yeah, and that's kind of what I mean. I love, I absolutely love that people want to pass crochet on. I love that there are people in this world that are confident enough with their skills that they want to pass it on. And I want to help facilitate that in every in any way possible. However, it's just, you know, learning online. I will say, um, I think that whenever you're teaching online, it can be very difficult if you can't uh, effectively show the individual things that that people need to learn. For example, um, you know, half of the very first lesson, whenever you're teaching someone to crochet, literally half of the very first lesson, if they've never touched a hook before, is this is how you hold your yarn, this is how you hold your hook, this is how you make a slip knot. That's half of it. That is a lot of time. That's a lot of energy. That's the foundation. Not, hey, we're going to make an afghan. Not, hey, I'm going to show you some stitches. Hey, we're going to make a headband. That's not at all how you teach people to crochet. You're absolutely skipping over a lot of foundational information. So I'm glad that you were in on that. Um event, whatever that was, Chris Lopez, and hopefully you gave them some meaningful um, feedback so that they could help better however they're teaching so that they really can pass on their knowledge in effective ways. Dipali says, and then left there, finally, and then left there, hmm. finally picked up again a year back, and I promised myself that I will never stop again. Dipali, I can't believe you've only really been crocheting full-time for about a year because you are a phenomenal artist, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, DePauly says, my first project was a rectangular shawl. That sounds like fun. Uh, Chris says her first pro project was destroyed in a fire. Oh, that's so sad. Um, Francis can't wait to see my first projects. Andrea says, I learned by teaching myself through YouTube. Such a great resource. I absolutely agree. YouTube is phenomenal. Um, Angel made some single crochet scarves. Amanda Woodbury's here. Hey, ladies. So good to see you. Uh, let's see. Amanda Woodbury says teaching online is definitely a learning curve and no more than two people at a time. Yeah, I agree with you, girl. hundred percent. Yeah. Teaching online. It's definitely a, an entirely different conversation. Um, it's not impossible. It definitely is a different strategy. Absolutely. All right, guys. So that is thing number one that I feel every crochet instructor should do. Uh, I had a very passionate plea on that. And if you guys uh, have any questions, comments, anything like that about thing number one, go ahead and post it. All right. And as, as I see them, I will, I will um, read them out loud and we'll kind of go from there. All right. Okay. Now moving on to thing number two, before I knock my glasses off, thing number two, every crochet instructor should do. Uh, I, I, and again, this is from my own personal uh, experience. It's after teaching dozens and dozens of other individuals how to crochet. And this is something that I felt like we were doing wrong collectively. And when I say we, I mean crocheters. Again, when we want to teach people how to crochet, this is one of those foundational things that I feel like we are doing wrong. So let's amend it, okay? Thing number two, every crochet instructor should do I believe is give your student the materials that they need, okay? Now, does that mean, hey, they wanna make a king size afghan, here's all the yarn and here's all the, no, that's not at all, okay? As a matter of fact, let's just kind of put projects out of our mind for right now. Now, beginners, beginners who want to learn to crochet, they were brought to crochet, they were inspired to want to crochet because maybe they saw a book or maybe their friend crochets or maybe they were on Pinterest. They saw, or maybe they saw some yarn that they were super stoked about, right? Something brought them to crochet. However, they probably don't have enough knowledge and resources information to really even know where to begin and that's where instructors come in. So whenever I teach, um, whenever I teach my instructors, this is how to be a great instructor, or whenever I teach, it, it definitely includes an instructor kit, okay? And that does not include a lot of things, and it's definitely something if you're charging, if you're a paid crochet instructor, or not, maybe you're teaching your kids, of course you're not gonna charge your kids, 
or are you? No, I'm kidding. Um, you know, you're, you want to supply them with the right materials. And, you know, again, as a crocheter, if you're a confident crocheter, you don't think about questions like that. You're not thinking about that. Or you're, you're probably thinking like, well, I can teach you to crochet with whatever you want to crochet with. Or you, you may limit that to, well, make sure it's a lighter yarn. Well, make sure it's not textured. Well, make sure it's not thread. You, you may come up with things that you're not even thinking about, right? Or, or you're not going to come up with things that, you know, you're going to wait for your student to come and then they come with the yarn. You're like, there ain't no way I can teach you with that. That is a variegated yarn uh, with lots of black and fuzz. And I, I, there's you just, you can't, it's not something, it's not an effective learning tool, right? So don't tell people, just bring your yarn and a hook and I'll teach you whatever you want to bring. I'll teach you with that. It's an ineffective strategy because you don't know what they're going to bring, right? And it may not be the best, uh, it may not be the best material to make fabric with, especially when you're learning how to hold your work and create stitches. So when I say, ooh, I lost you guys for a minute. My internet was bad. Um, so when I say create a kit, I do have some suggestions about what's included in that kit. First, you want to make sure that your student who is learning to crochet has a yarn that's going to be a good tool for them, okay? So use a really large uh, weight four yarn, a really large one that doesn't have a lot of plies, maybe roving or something like that, um, you know, a, uh, that, that's, that doesn't have a lot of colors going on. You don't want to use a variegated yarn. You don't want to use a really dark yarn. You want to use like a cream colored yarn or a white yarn, something that's very easy to see. Okay. And you, again, you want it to be, you know, you don't want it to have a lot of ply. You don't want it to split a lot. You don't want it to have a lot of texture. You don't want it to be something that's going to be difficult to work with, or you don't want the, the yarn itself to be so textured that as they're creating stitches, it's difficult to see those stitches individually. Because the thing that you're trying to teach them is not only creating a stitch, but how to identify it, right? And there's a lot of things you got to identify about a stitch. This is the top. This is the front. This is the face. This is the back, the non-facing side. So you want to identify all those pieces of anatomy in each crochet stitch that you're teaching. And that way, they're really learning how to make those, okay? So give them some yarn. They don't need a lot. They just need like maybe a little cake of yarn. Just, you know, a little bit of yarn because they're just learning stitches. Or that's what you should teach. I'll, I'll get to that. And then you want to give them their first crochet hook, okay? Because that's also part of the learning experience. That's part of the process. Here, I'm going to give you this crochet hook because it best fits with this yarn. And this is what I want you to know about this, okay? You may, you know, there's different kinds of crochet hooks. There's, they each... They have the same anatomy. They all look the same, right? But some are pointier, some are more blunt, some are longer, some are shorter, some have a handle, some don't. So just work with this. You might find that you hold your hook in a certain way that you want a shorter one. You might hold it in a certain way that you want a longer one or one with a bigger handle. So you don't want to overwhelm them with information, but you do want to give them enough information that they feel informed but they also don't have to think about going out and getting yarn and hooks or anything like that because you're supplying that to them. So really the only thing that you need to give them in a kit is yarn, the yarn that they need to learn stitches, a hook, a hook that they're going to use that's best going to work with that yarn, and some stitch markers because that's going to be a really effective tool in showing them what counts as a stitch and what doesn't, especially when working in rows because they're really going to learn how to identify their stitches and count them in rows. So just give them those few things. It's not going to be very expensive. Um, and it's just going to help give them a really good start. So I would love to hear what you guys think about thing number two that every crochet instructor should do. So I'm just going to keep scrolling. Uh, let's see, Depali. Wow, you guys are having all these side conversations here. I love it so much. Uh, Chris Lopez says, oh, they were classes by Michaels. One hour to show the first part of making a dishcloth. It shouldn't have been a beginner's class. Too many people didn't even know the basics. Yeah, and again, like I, I don't know anything about that program. But again, I do see that time and time and time again. You know, people in the crochet world are brilliant crocheters. Um, but I feel like those brilliant crocheters, those who want to pass on crochet in meaningful ways, we often forget, I did, we often forget what it means to be a beginner. So we're overlooking a lot of things, all of those major hurdles that crocheters 
uh, you know, need to have time to learn how to hold your work, how to hold your hook, how to chain, what is, what is tension, what does that mean, how to count your stitches, how to identify them. That is a huge lesson that you just can't skip over and pretend like, hey, that's easy, anybody can do it. It is easy, anyone can do it if you adequately give the time to properly show those and give your students time to learn them effectively. And then it can be a really great tool. Uh, Chris Lopez, I learned to crochet significant, uh, specifically to make that first project an Afghan made of loom flowers. Wow, oh my gosh. Amanda Woodbury, yes, I provide a complete kit so that they don't have to stress over what to buy, yes. Uh, Connie says, Katya, she's here live. She says, how are you today? I am roasting today. Took the grandkids to the park on a scorcher of a day in East Tennessee. Ladies, stay cool. Uh, Amanda Woodbury, she says, I ask uh, their favorite color and then find a pastel hue in that color. Oh, that's that's a really nice thing. That's a very nice personal touch to ask your ask your student what their favorite color is, uh, especially if it's a color within a range that you can use. You know, if they say my favorite color is black, you can go, well, I'm going to get you a really nice light gray <laughs> or something like that. Again, you really want to make sure that it's a color that they can easily see and they're not going to fight with. But that's a really nice personal touch, Amanda. I'm glad that you shared that. Uh, Donna says, I started teaching my cousin to crochet when the quarantine first began. I supplied a skein of Red Heart Super Saver in bright colors, a set of Susan Bates hooks, a pair of scissors, a uh, darning needle, and stitch markers. That is a very generous kit. Well done. Uh, let's see. Kay Mathis, she says, I used an eye hook with a light color yarn, uh, have a medicine bottle, with a needle in it, with a stitch marker, and a small pair of scissors, then a small bag to put it in. I try to use a small ball of yarn. Those are great, yes, and that's exact. those are all things that I would suggest. Those are really, really nice little touches. Uh, DePauly says, I too went once to a Michaels class, but there were five, including me. Yeah, again, I mean, you're gonna have maybe one or two successful students out of that scenario, but not all five. It's just not, or you're gonna be there for, you know, to teach from the ground up five people, that's a, that is an unnecessary amount of time to really adequately teach each person individually. You're just going to be spending too much individual time for everyone to get it and walk away feeling like, all right, I got this. I know what to practice and, and feeling like feeling confident enough to walk away with, um, you know, some confidence. And that's essentially what you want after every single lesson. Kay Mathis says, I also start with a document of how to make a chain and a single crochet. We work on that stitch over and over. Yeah, that's really good advice. Uh, DePauly, by the time the instructor came to me, I learned only one stitch, which I already knew. Yeah, so again, it's just not an ideal situation. Is it impossible? It's just not ideal. It's not a good strategy for everyone to feel confident and successful, including the instructor. So thank you for sharing that, DePauly. Okay, guys. All right. So I've already gone through two things of three that every crochet instructor should do. Here is my third one. I would love to hear what you guys think. So as I'm kind of going over this one, let me know in the comments. Give me your thoughts, your feelings, your feedback, or your own personal experiences, okay? Thing number three, every crochet instructor should know this, right? Um, you cannot teach someone how to crochet with a project. You cannot. You should not, and you cannot. And there's a lot of reasons why I say this, okay? Now, when typically when people want to learn to crochet, and this is, this is the problem that I feel is happening also within the crochet world. I was part of that problem for a long time until I realized it. Um, you know, crocheters are excited about a picture or a project or a yarn, right? It makes you want to crochet, seeing that beautiful new pocket shawl, seeing this cute little doll, seeing this blanket you can make for your baby. That excites people to want to crochet, and that's what pulls people into lessons. That is not a successful strategy, okay? Um, you're, you, you're pulling people in with this project, and it, I don't even care if it's a single crochet scarf, right? You should never ever do that because you're not teaching people how to crochet. You're still only focusing on the project. And the project may have a lot of learning objectives that your student just is not ready for. So when I learned to crochet, 
Of course, I made my two projects that I'm going to show you guys. We had no business learning those. And as a matter of fact, I learned nothing. I don't think I learned anything. Okay. After that, my school said, okay, now that everyone knows how to crochet, now all of our students are going to make granny squares. Isn't that wonderful? So then I just learned how to make granny squares and we'd make those at school, right? So I knew how to do that, but I couldn't tell you what I even knew. I couldn't tell you what I was doing. I just was replicating one thing that I learned, but I didn't really learn anything. I just learned one thing. So really, that didn't really teach me how to crochet because I couldn't really advance outside of that. So if you're starting with a specific project whenever you're teaching someone to crochet, it's a huge mistake because, again, you're not teaching them the foundation. You're just teaching them a project. And that can be the problem sometimes with, hey, I want to learn how to crochet. I'm just going to watch this one video for how to make this blanket. You might persevere and learn, hey, now I understand the different stitches. Now I understand tension. Now I understand you know, what it is that I'm doing, or maybe you just kind of maybe kind of made this one blanket sort of, but you may have more questions than answers. So you feel like I just it's, it's too much, I can't do it. So whenever you teach crochet, you absolutely have to start with and I said this a few times in the past, let's concentrate on holding your work, hold your yarn, hold your hook, let's get comfortable with that. Then we're going to make a slip knot. Let's get comfortable with that. Now I'm going to teach you how to chain. Let's get comfortable with that. These are the steps that you have to teach, right? And then you tell them, okay, the chain is the very first stitch that you're going to learn in crochet because I'm going to teach you how to work in rows, all right? You can also work in rounds, join rounds or whatnot, but that comes way later on, okay? We'll do that way later on. That's kind of more in the, you know, that's not in the beginner realm working in rounds. Rounds and, and round things, that's not beginner. It is not beginner. So there's definitely a sequence in which to learn things. So you teach the chain stitch, right? Now the American Crochet Association, I'm going to give you guys one of our secrets, one of our, one of our secrets in our training program. What is the next stitch you should teach someone in crochet? I'll wait just a minute because most people, I already know what most people are going to say, and I already know what most people start with. They start with, I'm still giving you guys a minute, the single crochet stitch. And that's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea because that's what I did for years and years and years and years because we teach in the order in which we think you should learn based on the order in which, what, you know, single, then you learn the double, then you, or the single, then you learn what next? The half double or the double or the trip. You know, if you start with the single crochet stitch, you're going to give your student a terrible experience because they just learned how to chain, right? Already that can be a little difficult. So then on top of that, you're gonna teach them the single crochet. It's the smallest stitch, it's very dense. It's very difficult to see and identify. And then on top of that, you're, gonna, you're, you're teaching them that on top of a chain. They're gonna be looking at this going, it's very small, it's very difficult to see. I can't differentiate stitches, which means I can't count what I'm doing. So already I feel like a failure. I feel like I'm not winning. I feel like I'm not understanding this, or maybe I just can't do this. So at the American Crochet Association, we start with the chain stitch, and then we teach the half double crochet. And the reason we do that is that it's in the middle, right? It's not as small as a single, it's not as big as a double, and there's just as many steps, steps so that you're, um, you don't feel overwhelmed when you learn the double crochet stitch. You don't feel like, oh my gosh, it's just too many steps, that's a lot of steps. So you teach them the double crochet stitch, and then you just teach them to make swatches, very small swatches, okay? And the reason you do that is because it's going to teach them a lot of different things, okay? All right, I taught you. We, we learned how to hold our work. Great. We learned how to make a slip knot. Great. Now we're going to chain. So chain 10. Great. Fasten it off. That's your first thing. Put it off to the side. Now we're going to, I'm going to teach you something else, and we're going to build on what we already learned, okay? So you're teaching them repetition, and you're giving them, um, you're giving them the opportunity to, to try things more than one time. Okay, so how are you going to hold your work? Great. Now we need to make a slip knot. You remember how to do that? Great. 
So by this time, they've already made about two or three slip knots, okay? And then you're going to teach them how to chain. Great. Now we're going to learn how to read a pattern, and we're just going to make a half double crochet swatch, okay? So we're going to follow the pattern, and we're going to chain 12. Let's use our stitch marker. Let's put it there. Now I'm going to teach you the next stitch. Isn't that great? It's the half double crochet. Here's how to work it. We've got our stitch marker here. We've chained. That doesn't count as a stitch. Now we're going to work 10 half double crochet all the way across. Great. Now we're going to learn how to work in rows. So you're, now you're going to chain a few more. You're going to use your stitch marker. Then you're going to turn your work. Great. Now we're going to make another row of half double crochet stitches. Fantastic. We're following the pattern here. The pattern says we need to have 10 rows of half double crochet. Make that, fasten it off. You're not making anything, but they're definitely learning how to start a project, count their stitches, follow a pattern, fasten off a project. And they've also learned to effectively count stitches and count rows and fasten off their work. That's a huge win in the crochet world, a huge win, because now they have a very small project and that's what, they, that's what they're practicing, okay? You want to make sure that they keep that, right? Because that's gonna give them motivation to, sweet, I sat down for 20 minutes and I made one and great, and already the first one that I made, it looks awful, but the third one that I made looks fantastic, so I'm so motivated to practice this a little bit more, and then in my next lesson, I'm gonna learn maybe another stitch, right? I'm gonna learn a few more stitches because I've practiced this so many times that now I'm ready to learn that double. I'm ready to learn that single crochet stitch. And I've practiced those so many times that whenever my lessons transition to making a project like a washcloth or um, you know, a hat or a cup cozy, you know, working in joined rounds, working in tubes, working in continuous rounds, now I'm ready for those things because I know how to hold my work, I know how to start a project, I know how to read a pattern. So those are my three things every crochet instructor should do, okay? They should only work with two or one students at a time. Uh, they should, that was thing number one. Two, you should give your student the materials they need, the exact materials that they need to start crocheting stitches, and that's it, and we talked about that. Thing number three, that every crochet instructor should do, you should just teach stitches first, that's it. The foundation, you should only teach them stitches and you should only teach them stitches in a specific order because you want your student to feel like they're learning. You want them to feel like they're persevering. You want to give them small instances where they feel like I did it, I understand, I'm ready to move on, I want to learn. You don't ever wanna do anything that makes your student feel defeated or like they just can't do it. So. You guys have been here chatting for some time as I have been. So let's see what you guys are saying here. Uh, let's see. Amanda Woodbury, she says something great. This is absolutely in reference to what I just said. She says, I agree. I always say, yes, you can make that, whatever the student wants to make. But let's start here. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So whatever excited your student to come to crochet and want to learn, you're going to tell them, absolutely, we're going to get to that. I will teach you how to do that or anything that you want to make. But we're going to go to the basics. I'm going to teach you how to uh, crochet anything, how to read any pattern, how to, how to, um, Build your own skill, ability, and resources so that you can crochet whatever you want without issue. So absolutely, Amanda, I'm so glad that you say that. Kay Mathis, she says, I have a group that, me that meets at Joann's, and while I teach older individuals, there are several of us that assist. Uh, that way no one gets left behind. She says, it is not a Joann's class. It is just a neighborhood group that meets at Joann's. That's fantastic. She says, after they have the five basic stitches down, then we work on a project. That is absolutely fantastic, and I wish more crochet instructors would do that, would really focus on the basics of learning stitches first. And in a way that, again, allows your students to feel like they're really learning um, and that they understand what, what's gonna happen next. Sophie says that she learned the double crochet after the chain. Uh, Chris Lopez says double crochet is the easiest. You know, I, I disagree only in that I felt like the half double crochet was the easiest just because it's one less step than the double crochet. It's not as tall. It's kind of one of those little squatty stitches, but it's not so small that you can't see and identify it. So that's why we decided chain, then learn the half double crochet next. Angel, she says, I can't grasp crocheting in the round. I always mess up. Just take it a little bit at a time. 
um, you know, pick a really simplistic project and kind of go from there. Uh, and um, I promise you'll get it. You, you can do it. Uh, let's see. Amanda Woodbury says it should be in order. Uh, chain, half double crochet, double crochet, then single crochet. You're making me proud, lady. You're, you're speaking my love language there. I love it. Good for you. Kay Mathis, she says, we talk about the five basics and then what you can build off each stitch. Good job. Donna says, nope, you should start with the basics, learning to hold the hook comfortably, holding the yarn comfortably, then learn the basics. Slip stitch, I don't think that that's a basic. I think that that's absolutely something that you should learn, slip stitching, but it's not a beginner concept. So slip stitching is more so, in my opinion, something that you teach uh, whenever working in joined rounds or something like that. Uh, that's when that kind of comes into play. So slip stitching is... Uh, it, not that it's advanced, it's just not, ne it's not used in most beginner projects. Um, but yes, yeah, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, uh, repeat each sequence until the student is comfortable and understands the process of the stitch and the swatch is uniform. Yes, good tips in there. Absolutely. Beverly Wade, she says, I learned how to crochet as a little child. Uh, when I was going to vacation Bible school back on my home island, uh, St. Thomas. Wow. Uh, let's see. Oh, Amanda says she loves all three tips. Depali says, thank you for sharing your knowledge. My pleasure. I absolutely love sharing what I've learned because I, I've done a lot of things wrong, um, but I wanted to persevere. I loved crochet and I wanted to make sure that I was making a positive impact in the crochet world. And then when I feel like I figured things out, when I was doing things uh, that were better than the way I learned, of course I want to pass those on. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying these tips. Uh, Rama, she says, Selena, thank you for the wonderful tips. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, Aurora says, great tips. Oh, Chris Lopez says, no, I meant double crochet is easier to learn than single crochet. I will agree with you there. Oh, not, not in terms of of the steps it takes to complete the stitch because there's definitely more steps in a double crochet stitch, but it's definitely easier to see. It's definitely, and that's one of the most important things that you need to you need to pass on in crochet. You're not only making stitches, but you want your student to understand what they're making. You want them to identify it because they're gonna have to count it. So that's a really important aspect. Uh, Amanda Woodbury, oh, I wouldn't know all this stuff if it wasn't for you. I'm happy to pass it on. I'm glad you're part of the American Crochet Association. Uh, Aurora, interesting, interesting comment. She says, why do the boys grasp it faster than the girls? I don't think it's a boy-girl thing. I think that it's an interest. It's an interest thing. Um, and actually, I've had the exact opposite experience. Uh, you know, I'll use my children as an example. My daughter grasped crochet and learned how to crochet when she was five. And my son's 11, and he just doesn't really have the interest or the attention span. So I think that I don't think that it's a boy-girl thing. Uh, I think that there are a lot of other variables involved. Donna, she says, oops, meant slip knot, not slip stitch. Yeah, those are... That I, um, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. I was like, oh, I don't know if we teach that. Okay, good, we're on the same page. Uh, Angel, she says, thanks for the tips. Francis says, thanks for the tips. All right, the last comment that I see here is from Angel. She says, the half double is my favorite stitch. It's a fun one, isn't it? All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys today on this Tip Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I love having conversations about... Uh, topics that are important to me, topics that will hopefully help you have a better crochet life. Uh, if you guys want a transcript, a uh, quick and easy read about this topic today, all you got to do is click on the link in the video description. It'll take you right there. And if you guys are interested in learning more and seeing more or in joining our crochet instructor training program, again, you can always find that when you visit AmericanCrochetAssociation.org, or you can also find a link uh, find a link to that course when you click on the link in the video description, wherever that may be. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. It is always a pleasure to be part of the crochet community. And I thank everyone for coming on over here and joining me live. Peace, love, crochet, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.